Hello, friends and enemies. Welcome to another top 10 favorite, and from what I believe, are the best performances by some of the greatest actors of all time. Now oh, get this, you double-crossing chimpanzee. I'm starting from 10 and then cartwheeling my way up to number one, and it'll do your heart good to know I have seen every picture attainable of these artists, so every list, honestly and truthfully, comes from passionate, seductive, and sassy accuracy. Ladies and gentlemen, I just went gay all of a sudden because this episode on this specific cat has been a long time coming. And another recent winner on the Patreon page, which you can all subscribe and be first priority voters if you'd like and support the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. This is the season of giving. I love y'all. But you're a lucky fella, Mr. Smith, because we are going to talk about one of the greatest movie stars of all time. The dashing, the delectable, the debonair, Cary Grant. Born famously as Archibald Alec Leach in Bristol, England, Archie didn't have, shall we say, the best of childhoods. In fact, he had quite a traumatizing upbringing, with his father being an alcoholic and his mother suffering from depression after the loss of Archie's older brother, who died of tuberculosis. Carrie's father actually had his mother committed into a mental hospital, making Archie believe she left the family and wouldn't find out until years and years later what really happened. Needless to say, Archie already developed great maturity and strength as a young boy, but also a lot of insecurities, alongside the art of song and dance. He was inspired by the Bristol Hippodrome, along with the Pender Troupe, where Archie developed his master skills at acrobatics and physical comedy, which brought him to America, touring about with various comedy troupes like the Knockabout Comedians and the Walking Stanleys, and then later founding his own vaudeville company called Jack Janis Company, which wasn't going well at all. Soon enough, though, Broadway producers would remember his charm and influence enough to put him on Broadway, notably the production of A Wonderful Night, and you know what happens after that? That's right. Yep. Hollywood, darling. We all remember his endearing leading man presence, which was noticed with Marlena Dietrich in Blonde Venus, and of course, with Mae West in I'm No Angel, and the Best Picture nominee, She Done Him Wrong. But Archie could do no wrong, since he was one of the most appealing stars to catapult to leading man status. And well, critically, sure, he could do some wrong. <laughs> but that's always the game in our business, which we can't blame. It's even an inspiration for him to continue on, since he was told by a Hollywood executive, you're bow-legged and your neck is far too thick. The lovable Archie Leach would become Cary Grant, based on the character Cary Lockwood he played in the Broadway show Nicky. And Grant, well... It just sounded cool. Which Cary Grant, in all his suave and attractive appeal, was so damn cool. Cary Grant is one of the greatest actors of cinema, hands down, because of how much fun he gave a character, how much strength he gave a man. And he was one of the greatest inspirations for me, believing a leading romantic man could get the girl, but also be so damn funny. Now, if I could just perfect the Bristol turned into transatlantic accent. Maybe I'll be okay. I'm still working on that. Significantly, I have to say early in his career, he was a contract player with Paramount Pictures, but he decided to freelance with various studios opposing being tied down to one studio, which was always an inspiring commitment for an actor to do, especially at that time. You know I say this every time, friends, but I without a doubt would need to do a top 20 of this man because of how many phenomenal performances he's given in film, both hilarious and poignant. But rules are rules, baby, and if you break them, something else gets broken. Not threatening you at all, but you know what I mean. He's done so many great productions that to this day, I'm always inspired by him. That's absolutely what I'm trying to tell you, Carrie. You are so irresistibly genius. So dry your eyes, baby, it's out of character. We're dashing away and talking about the top 10 best performances of Mr. Suave, Archie Leach at heart, the greatest screwball comedy, romantic leading man ever, Cary Grant. Number 10, Arsenic and Old Lace. Alrighty, here we go. Is anyone surprised? Positively because this famous adaptation of Joseph Kesserling's hilarious play is so beloved by audiences today, it's 
Insanity. And Insanity runs in my family. Mortimer Brewster, what a cad. He's a bit of a snooty snob when it comes to marriage, but falls in love with Elaine, and off he goes to tell his two lovely aunts, slowly discovering their little hobby. They love killing old men and burying them in the cellar. It's easy to see why so many critics and audiences look at Grant's comedic masterwork of a performance here as one of their personal favorites, for this is a role that was made for Cary Grant. The mugging to the camera is nonstop, and at times, for me, it can be too much. But after a while, Grant just charms the hell out of you. I mean, Grant even admitted himself. It's one of his least favorite performances and roles he's ever done because of how over the top he is. But you can always blame the director, whom, as you all should know, is one of my favorite directors of all time, Frank Capra, for giving its theatrical punch to an already genius black comedy. But Grant gives Mortimer a great kick of vaudevillian flair that Grant did so well. Some controversy was exposed about Grant's salary as well, but more confirmed reports stated that Grant made about $160,000 and donated the majority of it to the Allied Forces Charities during the heat of World War II. Yes, not a favorable time for Grant on set, but still to this day, for a lot of the going public's Halloween, this is a delightful picture to have on because of Grant's over-the-top scary fun. Number 9. An Affair to Remember Yes, another shocker, I am sure, being one of the greatest romance films of all time with Cary Grant and, of course, the underrated Deborah Carr. Is it Carr or is it Kerr? That never gets old. Famously remade from 1939's Love Affair, which also starred Irene Dunn, who would make three films with Cary Grant later on. Isn't that fun? But also both versions directed by the great Leo McCary, who would also work with Cary in four films. Whew, Hollywood is a fun business, isn't it? Carrie and Deborah are just gorgeous together. They both give their characters such generous heart and empathy that we can see the instant connection, the electricity that ignites between them on their boat trip home, even though when they first meet, they can't stand each other. But as true love is really blossoming, even though they are betrothed to other partners, they agree to meet in six months on top of the Empire State Building to make the changes they need to in order for their relationship to work. But will they be able to make it happen and come together, even if unfortunate events seem to destroy it? Nominated for four Academy Awards, this classic features Grant and Carr at their poignant best, offering a little improv that makes their performances even sweeter and genuine. You never would guess Carrie was suffering off screen since he was under hypnotherapy, influenced by his wife at the time, Betsy Drake, to quit smoking. And it worked, even though he would squeeze in a cigarette or two. Carrie is still just as charming and three-dimensional. And by the time we get to the very end, oh my God, are we oceans of tears. Grant and Carr play that scene so beautifully, which is why the amazing Oscar-nominated Nora Ephron may she rest in peace, is so inspired by it that Sleepless in Seattle was made. If you have that special someone or yearn for that special someone or you just have a lovely romantic heart, Cary Grant makes it such a dream that you fall in love with cinema. Number eight, The Awful Truth. Yes, God almighty, how I wish this one was much, much higher. For this classic, certainly, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the greatest screwball comedies of all time and is argued as the ultimate screwball kickoff for Cary Grant, which built his lovable persona as we know and love him to this day, being the first of three magical collaborations between Cary Grant and Irene Dunn as a crazed married couple looking to get an amicable divorce. But it's just amazing how the two can't seem to get away from each other. And so the calamity explodes as they both try to sabotage each other's remarriage. Based on the play of the same name by Arthur Richmond and an earlier adaptation back in 1929, Columbia head Harry Cohn thought, divorce, remarriage, sabotage, well, this ought to be funny. So they hired Leo McCary, the comic genius of Ruggles of Red Gape and Duck Soup, yet to make an affair to remember, to take it on, and major points to McCary for making the film what it is, since famously, Grant, Dunn, and Ralph Bellamy complained there was no script since it was changing over and over. 
Grant especially was going apeshit and wanted off the picture. But Grant caught on fast with McCary's changes and became such a heavy hitter when it came to on-screen improvisation. The film marks such a significant history for Cary Grant, obviously, as Peter Bogdanovich puts it, being the first leading man to take on the physical comedy that normally would be given to a supporting character. But Jerry the Nipper, he yeah, know how to win the audience with his pratfalls and dynamic slapstick abilities, which liberated Grant and felt like he found his revolutionary place in film and entertainment. Nominated for six Oscars, winning one for Leo McCary's brilliant and creative direction, The Awful Truth will always be cherished as one of Carrie's inspiringly magical best. Number seven, Suspicion. My God, one of the greatest. An absolute favorite of mine made by the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock, and was the first collaboration between Hitchcock and Mr. Grant. As an actor myself, I love roles and opportunities where you cast a dumb and dumb loving funny man as the potential villain. And Cary Grant delivers on every single diabolically charming level as Johnny, an irresponsible playboy who seems honest enough only about love, for he charms Lena, a bespectacled Joan Fontaine in her Oscar-winning performance. She is clever to see that maybe he's trying to get to her for her family's money, but challenged by her own family's ideals for her, and charmed by Johnny at the same time, she decides to take the plunge to marry Johnny. But now certain events suspect attempted murder. Could her beloved husband really try to kill her? I love this film. It is one of the many I caught on TCM one evening years and years ago by myself, and I was just blown away mainly at the confidence and energy of Grant in this role. Grant absolutely nails it as Johnny with his slivery seduction and boyishly mysterious charm, giving Lena the worst pet name anyone could have. Monkey face, monkey face, which is just so bad and yet it's hilarious. This was far from a pleasant time on set for Grant. For legend has it, he was angry and upset with both Hitchcock and Fontaine, for he felt Fontaine's behavior was brash and unprofessional, and felt Hitchcock was spending too much time on Fontaine with her performance. Grant vowed never to work with Hitchcock again, but look how that turned out. Despite any modern audience issues there are, like the up in the air ending, which come on, you know he's going to try to kill her again. You just know it. Cary Grant gives what the role calls for brilliantly even though he wasn't nominated for this film which i think he should have he was just genius in dark roles like these number six numb but the lonely heart okay this may seem as a little too high to most cary grant fans but let me tell you straight ladies and gentlemen cary grant's second and final academy award nomination for best actor here is one of the most underrated gems you would ever find in cinema. Based on the novel by Richard Llewellyn, Carrie stars as Ernie Malt, who is supposed to be a teenager in the book, but does it have to be word for word perfect? Of course not. So Ernie is irresponsible, an aimless drifter living in London who returns home to his mother, played brilliantly by Ethel Barrymore in an Oscar winning performance and wholeheartedly deserved. She gives him an ultimatum to stay and help with the shop or leave forever and after enough guilt and yet hope in his heart he strives to build a better life for he and his mother with a little inspiration from a former gangster's wife ada this is such an important performance and film for grant for it was adapted and directed by one of the greatest playwrights in theater clifford odets one of only two pictures he's ever directed and it's always a phenomenal experience every time you get to work with such a pioneer for the world of acting which indeed meant a great deal to carry. Filmed during the heat of the war, you could still feel the shift of deeper dramatic work that consumed Carey for a time. Even though this particular film is not necessarily the best, the pacing is very slow and can be seen as very mundane, which is why what saves this picture and many pictures like this are the performances. And again, what makes this important is how close the story was to Grant's heart buying the rights to the book himself, so he made sure he could tell the story as Ernie, even though knowing and fearing he was too old for the role. The heartfelt relationship between he and his mother, you can tell in those sensitive and harsh scenes between Carrie and Ethel, 
There was such a real and raw boldness Cary Grant gives. And I love the distant shot after he sees his mother, how he's slowly walking down the hall and catches himself on the wall, almost in a stance of an attack. This is famously one of two films that features Grant crying. And even though the film didn't do well at the box office, many film aficionados respect this next level of showmanship and versatility. Compliments from the amazing Cary Grant. Number five, North by Northwest. Oh, can you hear Bernard Herrmann's theme? Dun 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 So damn epic. For me, there are three things that first come to mind about this classic picture. Number one, Hitchcock. Number two, Bernard Herrmann's phenomenal score. And three, Cary Flippin Grant. Sad to say he's number three in line, but what can you say? The film is so brilliantly Hitchcock. But the powerfully human and romantic essence of this picture, what makes it work, is the valuable and memorable performance of Cary Grant's thrilling and driven character, Roger Thornhill. A simple ad exec who's been mistaken for a federal agent and is framed for murder, and he must get to the bottom of whatever the hell is going on. Grant had a field day filming this classic. Well, not really, since his script was never really given to him until the day of. So he literally had no idea what was going on and where his character was going each filming day. It's honestly the testament to Hitchcock to trust Cary for bringing himself to the role and bringing that Cary Grant persona to the chaos. He was 55 at the time, so he was still reluctant to play Roger. But in this case, and in all of Grant's romantic comedies, Cary is just ageless. His breath of life kept each character so full of energy. To run from a charging flying plane to create one of the most iconic sequences in film history, he's gotta have it. Of course they shot Grant running on a soundstage, just more movie magic indeed. This film would have been a much different film if Jimmy Stewart, who was originally slated to play the role. And it's the definite case where you can't see anyone else playing the role of Roger so authentically and in such a sophisticated fashion. It's clear to see why, based on Grant's persona, he very much inspired a James Bond look and feel. Needless to say, Grant certainly had his chance at playing Bond here in one of the greatest adventure mysteries and still goes down in history for many people at being his best. Number four, Notorious. Yes, another brilliant Hitch and Grant collaboration, which stands the test of time. Once again, I wish this was much higher. Cary Grant's strong, romantic, and powerfully subtle performance as government agent Devlin was featured by Premier Magazine as one of the greatest out of 100 performances of all time in film, which is a tall order, but I can't disagree with it at all. You want to talk about the perfect matchup of a role, a role that just is catered for you. This is it. And Grant's chemistry with Oscar-winning icon Ingrid Bergman is masterful. Being the daughter of a convicted Nazi spy, Bergman just wants to enjoy life. But Grant tries to coerce Bergman into going undercover and gather information from a group of Nazi scientists led by Claude Rains in a brilliant Oscar-nominated performance. But Grant might be getting close to the witness. A little too close. Oh, let me tell you something. All of their love scenes are some of the sexiest and hottest intimacy scenes you would ever see in film, which Hitchcock knew how to shoot. And Grant and Bergman, they obviously knew how to boil your blood. There are so many fantastic sequences that showcase Grant here at the top of his romantic espionage game. Like when he has to tell Ingrid that she needs to go and get romantic with Claude Rains to get more info. And it looks like Carrie isn't doing anything in the scene, but his body language says everything. With how he's holding the cigarette, it is so subtle, but it's so clear and powerful that you know he's not for this. And the iconic scene at the racetrack where he's laying into her silently because she already has been with Reigns and he is devastatingly jealous. Dry your eyes, baby. It's out of character. So fantastic. Cary Grant will always look at this picture with fond memories because of how every aspect just came together. And we certainly will never forget how we fell in love with Cary all over again here. Number three, Penny Serenade. Uh, one of the sweetest, 
heartwarming love stories you would ever find. Starring Cary Grant in clearly one of the best dramatic and most important performances in his whole career, which came out the same year as Suspicion. So 1941 was very much an important year for Grant. He would blow audiences away with his performance, which earned him his first Oscar nomination for Best Actor. He and Irene Dunn pair up again as a couple who just organically blossom into a fairy tale like romance. I love how the film is introduced, I must say, with Irene Dunn alone in her shop with such a somber face and she plays the record of you were meant for me. And through each record she puts on, we are transported into a flashback of their love. And you already feel something, something tragic is going to happen. But the way Oscar winning director George Stevens guides us through it and how we are introduced to the quirky and lovable Carrie here and the spark between he and Irene, it makes your heart spin. The classic scene on the rooftop of New Year's Eve is so lovingly iconic as he convinces her to marry him. And then boom, the bells ring, the snow is falling. Happy New Year, everyone is, so, it's tremendous. All throughout the film, we are given real life through the heat of the war. This was a love story that spoke straight up truth of a couple falling in love and wanting to start a family, but are hit with tragedy of a miscarriage. So they work on adopting, which they receive the adorable Trina. I love all the screwball moments of them, Carrie and Irene doing absolutely everything they can not to wake the baby, like their lives to freaking depend on it. It's hilarious. But of course, Carrie's character, Roger, doesn't even make enough money to keep her. And we witness the most powerful dramatic turn Carrie has ever given, trying to convince the judge he'll be able to provide for his family. Just please don't take the baby. George Stevens made a perfect decision to keep the majority of the scene in a master, so we didn't get a manufactured cut of Carrie in this scene. He keeps the camera on him the whole time, and it was hard for Carrie. He knew this was a big scene, and he didn't feel ready for it because he didn't want to get vulnerable. But with the trust of the director, Carrie opened his heart and literally breaks down so subtly in the scene that anyone who knew Carrie only as the suave screwball funny man, you'll be blown away by what he accomplishes in this scene alone. But of course, throughout the whole picture. With the holidays coming up, I highly recommend watching Carrie giving what he actually considers at one point his best performance. Number two, His Girl Friday. Now listen, you 10 cent glamour girl. This was especially a hard one since I absolutely love, love, love this screwball classic, which of course is featured as one of the greatest comedies ever made with Cary Grant at the absolute height of his comedic powers and only being in the picture business for eight years at this point of 1940. Grant and Rosalind Russell together are forces to be reckoned with and one of the greatest pairings in comedy. And what a damned horrible shame they never did another film together. But thank God we have this classic based on indeed one of the greatest plays ever written and performed, The Front Page. For those of you who have seen this amazing film, you know Grant and Russell worked frantically overtime like dogs to get this script outright. Because legend has it that the script was 180 pages long when an average screenplay, not in these days, but back then was about 110 to 120 pages long. Calculate that at a minute a page, so 110 to 120 minutes. But get that, 180 pages, and the film runs in 92 minutes. That leaves almost 240 words per minute, which obviously sparks the beautifully authentic overlapping dialogue, which was still not quite a thing at this point in cinema. Not to mention more improv, which Cary Grant learned from his friend Leo McCary, offering such phenomenal lines like, you're through. Well, listen, the last man that said that to me was Archie Leach just a week before he cut his throat. And, well, there's a guy in the taxi down at the court building. Looks like that movie star. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Ralph Bellamy. And it is Ralph Bellamy playing that character. <laughs> it's just fantastic when we, the audience, feel in on the jokes. At first, it was hard for Russell to play along, and she felt insecure, like Carrie did earlier in his career. But Carrie, in his beloved generosity, encouraged her to keep going, and Russell delivers just as strongly as Grant. But Grant adds the perfect amount of menace, 
malice, and masculinity into the classic role of Burns, which made his performance so damn hilarious. Get back in there, you mock turtle. You ask any critic circle and magazine about the greatest comedies of all time, His Girl Friday is easily one of the top 50 of all time, thanks to the majesty and drive and lovable quality of Cary Grant. All right, you devil dogs, here are some honorable mentions. Indiscreet. Now, I know this must be surprising, but this is indeed an honorable one since Cary Grant himself said this film was his personal favorite of all the films he did as well as performances. Wild, I know. But given to where he was at the point of his career and life, and this story was indeed another romantic comedy addition, it reteamed him with the beautiful Ingrid Bergman as she plays a frustrated actress who begins to fall in love with Philip, played by Grant, even though he's already married. The film has great comedy, I must say, as director Stanley Donnan gives us fantastic split screen, and Carrie and Ingrid's chemistry never dies, which is why they received Golden Globe nominations for their work here. What's not to love? You have a dancing and musical Cary Grant, which we all need in our lives. Charade. Yes, indeed, the classic Hitchcockian romantic thriller comedy not made by Hitchcock, but Stanley Donnan, of course, featuring Grant in the romantic lead this time with Audrey Hepburn as he tries to protect her from crazed fiends trying to get at her deceased husband's fortune. Grant was famously hesitant and concerned to play this classic role. He could play in his sleep, practically with him being almost 60 and Audrey being 32. And yes, by today's generation, uh, it's a little gross. It would be a little off-putting <laughs> looking at the noticeable age difference. But in the end, the fiery and witty chemistry between Grant and Audrey is just second to none. And Grant found genius ways to avoid any complication and trouble. Like the classic shower scene, <laughs> Grant choosing not to take his clothes off. It's just much funnier that way. Sadly, this remained Grant and Audrey's only film together as well, even though Grant was offered to play opposite Audrey in Love in the Afternoon, Sabrina, and even My Fair Lady. But alas, we were all blessed with this brilliant duo, which gave Grant the honors of another BAFTA and Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor. Holiday! Finally, a Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn classic. Yes, one of four films they did together, which surprised me so pleasantly, as it features Carrie as free thinker Johnny, about to get married to a millionaire's daughter and set up to take over the family business. But he wants to spend time on holiday before he takes the next step. And in doing so, he develops quite a close relationship with his fiancee's sister, played by Hepburn. Based on the play and remade from the 1930 film, directed by George Cooker, everyone is on their A-game, including and especially a scene-stealing Lou Ayers as Hepburn's drunken and philosophical brother, Ned. But Carrie and Kate are sensational together, with both of them doing their own tumbling since both of them were a bit athletic. What with Grant being part of an acrobatic troupe? Get out of here. The film bombed at the box office, thus Harry Cohn putting the blame on Hepburn, famously calling her box office poison but Carrie and Kate shine wonderfully and is widely beloved today as you would expect, of course. Father Goose, the little underrated Oscar-winning gem for best original screenplay featuring Carrie in one of his dear favorite roles as the drunken curmudgeon of the title. Coerced by the Navy to live on an isolated island to spot any enemy activity or aircrafts and come to find a school teacher and her 12 little girl students on the run, so hence he becomes a little caretaker. Grant is so great against type in this, with his crazy grayish beard and completely disheveled, dirty exterior, which is why the film wasn't so universally praised by audiences, because they only wanted to see Mr. Suave again, but it was a role that Grant felt very proud of since he found himself playing a character that was a bit closer to his own self. The Philadelphia Story. Oh, yes, I couldn't forget this romantic comedy gem because it's C.K. Dexter Haven. What's up? You are. I only hope it's worth it. And it is, being honestly the very first movie I ever saw Cary Grant in. And of course, it was that iconic shot in the silent sequence of Grant leaving Tracy in the beginning. She cracks his club. He marches right up behind her, taps her on the shoulder, raises his fist, changes his mind, and then just shoves her back in with his hand. 
over her mouth. Star-studded trio of Grant Hepburn again, and with Jimmy Starr makes this such a memorable Oscar-winning classic that I hold dearly to my heart, especially the improv moment when Mike Connor is drunk inside CK's house, staring at CK, silent pause, he takes a drink, and then <laughs> Carrie says, excuse me, hmm? Oh, sorry. I love how you can see Carrie break and try to hold it together. It just creates such a human moment between the actors and the audience. Like, every time actors on SNL break, it's those moments that bind us, which Cary Grant did so expertly. Number one. Yes, that's right. Bringing up baby. Now don't lose your head, Susan. I've got my head. I've lost my leopard. That was a terrible Catherine Hepburn. But you know without a doubt, this deserves to be number one. Cary Grant's iconic performance as paleontologist David Huxley has been rated by hundreds and hundreds as being his most hilarious, most defining, and most ridiculous. <laughs> Directed, of course, again by Howard Hawks, their first collaboration together. This zany and fantastic film is the definitive screwball comedy with, of course, Grant's performance as the definitive screwball leading man, which has quite honestly inspired countless remakes and characterizations, most notably by Ryan O'Neill in Peter Bogdanovich's What's Up Doc. And of course, you can say the fun dynamic between Clark Kent and Lois Lane is very much inspired by Grant and Katherine Hepburn's sizzling chemistry here. David is so excited to finally finish his Brontosaurus model, but also slightly excited to marry his assistant, Alice Swallow. <laughs> Anyway, and in order to get a million dollar grant, I'll be with you in a minute, Mr. Peabody. He has to make nice with the heiress, Susan Hepburn, even though she is driving him absolutely insane. And thus the calamity ensues, especially when he has to help her with her pet leopard, baby. Grant's look was taken off the look of Harold Lloyd, who was originally going to play David, which fits nicely. And Grant said he enjoyed every minute making this film because he loved working with Kate. He hated the leopard, but loved improv and trying new comic business in the film since this was Hawks. He could do whatever he wanted, especially with Grant ad-libbing one of the greatest lines in film. You know, the whole sequence, these aren't my clothes. Where are your clothes? I've lost my clothes. But why are you wearing these clothes? Because I just went gay all of a sudden. Unbelievably hilarious. And the iconic moment when he marches into her bedroom, one look at the leopard, <gasps> it's hard to believe to this day how the film flopped and labeled Katherine Hepburn again as box office poison. But you ask anyone today, they will regard this film as Hawk's best film. And we can thank Cary Grant for adding his flair of vaudevillian comedy again to give its essence and madcap excitement. Premiere Magazine again, added his performance here as David Huxley as one of the best performances of all time. And quite frankly, I shan't argue it. Cary Grant was quite often told, everyone wants to be Cary Grant. And one time he told an interviewer, so would he. Since he himself has struggled to really understand himself, what given his upbringing and five marriages. But that never ever stopped Cary Grant to accomplish amazing things like, donating his salaries to the troops during World War II, being awarded the King's Medal for service in the cause of freedom, citing his outstanding service to the British War Relief Society, receiving the Kennedy Center honors in 1981, but also the honorary Oscar in 1970 for his outstanding achievement in film. Not to mention inspiring countless artists in film like Tony Curtis, Christopher Reeve, among dozens and dozens more. The man made it normal, possible, and endearing to be handsome and funny at the same time. That a real type like that could exist in film. And he would always give his best in film, no matter what. He certainly wasn't perfect. Once again, I'll always say this, who is? But he's a timeless star that needs to be preserved for generations and generations for he always was and always will be the great, handsome, funny, leading man with depth. Now, get out. 
I say with love, my friends, <laughs> but please tell me immediately. Do you agree with my picks of pictures? And what are your favorite performances of Archie Leach, or better known as the beautiful and dashing Cary Grant? Share in those comments below. It always warms my heart. Be sure to click the like button, guys. Subscribe and share with all your friends. And better yet, subscribe to the Patreon page for your vote counts for the next poll and features more and more reviews. But until next time, darlings, thank you so much for watching. And now, I'm going out to get some popcorn and pink lemonade. I've just seen a three-ring circus. Have a good one and keep those classics alive. Thank you.